Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's give the Lord another hand clap of praise. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. I can only imagine this must be a little of what it felt like when the day of Pentecost had fully come. They were all together in one place, in one mind, and in one accord. You know what that says? There was unity. Amen. And the Bible says that he, we are buried together with him. He's made us sit together in heavenly places. And he's going to raise us up together. God never saved anybody to be a lone ranger. Amen. We are members of the same body. And you know something? I need every one of you. And you know something else? You need me. We need each other. So we need to not talk about one another and not make fun of one another and not put down one another, but we need to support one another and encourage one another and pray for one another because we're all in this together. We are in a spiritual warfare and we need to look out for each other's back. Can you say amen? amen. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, I love the Lord. I feel his presence so strong. People may wonder and ask about us Pentecostals. Why do you guys do what you do? Because you know something? All churches don't do what we do. Amen. We, we are unique. We are set aside. We are peculiar. There's nothing wrong with that. Amen. That's what identifies us. And I don't want to be like everybody else. Amen. And, and people sometimes would visit our churches and, and I've had people ask me, say, what? Why do y'all always standing and sitting and standing and sitting? And what's this deal with raising your hands all the time? What, what is going on? And I simply tell them, you know something? We're just rehearsing. We're just practicing. We are just getting in shape. Glory to God. Because we intend to go somewhere. Amen. And oh, my, 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 my brothers and sisters, when we get on the streets of gold, you, you think I get excited down here. <laughs> you ain't seen nothing. When we see that great, beautiful city, and I'm going to tell you something, one of these days we're going to see that city. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, it is noisy up there. Because I got the feeling God likes noise. The Bible says he's surrounded by all of these angels. And with a loud voice, they are saying, holy, 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 Lord God almighty. Noisy. Years ago, we had a guest come visit our church. And after service was over, we went to talk with her about her experience I said, ma'am, uh, how did you find the church, and did you like the church, and what are some things you enjoyed? And she said, oh, I, I, I love the spirit of unity in your church. I, I love how everybody just get together. This is wonderful. And she had a lot of nice things to say. But then I asked her, I said, now, ma'am, you being a first-time visitor, you know, sometimes you'll see things that we overlook. Is there anything that you didn't like that made you uncomfortable? She said, well, <laughs> it was so noisy. She said, why y'all got to be so noisy? The music's loud. The singing is loud. The preaching is loud. Why everything got to be so loud? God's not deaf. That's what she said. And I just kind of smiled at her. I said, well, ma'am, you know, you know, God's not deaf, but all that loudness don't make him nervous neither. <laughs> Amen. God enjoys response. Amen. And, and, and what we're doing is we're just, 
we're just practicing. We're just getting in shape. Amen. Because I, I, I don't intend to stay here a whole lot longer. And the longer I live on this earth, the less attractive it is to me. I, I'm looking for the coming of the Lord. I can't wait for the coming of the Lord. I'm looking. Come quickly. Lord Jesus, there's nothing in this world, amen, here for me. I want to be with him. I yearn to be with him. And I, and I want to talk to you a little bit about that, amen, for the next few minutes. I want to talk to us about being rapture ready. Rapture ready ready let's stand together I'm going to go to two places in the scripture and first to the book of Romans the 13th chapter and starting at verse 11 oh I'm going to read verse 11 and 12 praise God Oh, God is so good. If, if, you, if you really pay attention to what you've been hearing, I see a, a connection through all the messages that's been coming forth. God is moving. He's talking to us. Are you listening? Amen. Amen. Chapter 13 of Romans, starting at verse number 11. The Apostle Paul says, and that knowing the time. Somebody say, it's time. Sound like a sermon. And that knowing the time, that now, everyone say now. now. Say right now. Right. Say not tomorrow. Not, tomorrow. not next week. Right. Right, now, right now. It is high time to wake up out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. In other words, it's closer than you think. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Why? Because now it's high time. It's time to jump in the pool. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. It's high time. Someone say high time. One more verse of scripture, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, beginning at verse 13, and I'm going to read down to verse number 18. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, Paul is writing to us. Paul said, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep or those that have already passed, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, how many believe that? If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent or hinder or stop them which are asleep for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout Woo! with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. Man, when Jesus come back, it's going to be loud. <laughs> and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, which are alive. You know, somebody asked me one time, I said, Brother Easter, the Bible is such an old book. How is it relevant to us today? Here it is right here. We which are alive. We which, are you alive? Yes. Talking about us. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. 
comfort one another with these words. In other words, whatever you're facing, whatever challenge you're going through, whatever sickness you are wrestling with, whatever calamity may be coming to your life, be comforted with these words. It's not going to be much longer now. It's not going to be much longer now. Hallelujah. Don't look at the problems. Look up. It's closer than you think. Don't be entangled with the affairs of this life and the politics of this life and all the calamities of this life. Look up. It's closer than you think. In a moment, it's going to be all over and worth every heartache. It's going to be worth every pain. It's going to be worth every sacrifice. Jesus is coming soon. It's closer than you think. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's pray together. Holy Spirit of the living God, we love you. Oh God, we thank you for the privilege to be called by your name. In this day and in this hour, we recognize the signs that are all around us. God, don't let us get sleepy in this hour. Don't let us get comfortable in this hour. God, we are ready. We are in tune. We are expecting your soon return. God, touch us and bless us and heal us and deliver us. We ask in Jesus' name. And everyone say amen. amen. Now all across this congregation, let's give the king of kings a great rousing hand of applause as we, he usher in his power and his glory. The angels of the Lord are in this building. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. We're not talking about a prophetician. We're not talking about an entertainer. I'm talking about the creator of the universe. Hallelujah. He's woo. Glory to God. We welcome you, O oh Lord. Let your will be done. Rapture ready. God bless you. You may be seated. Hallelujah. The apostle Paul says that it's closer than what we believe. When I woke up this morning, I woke up realizing I am closer to the sounding of the trumpet today than I was yesterday. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. And the thing that concerns me is that I pray that we don't just become so callous to hearing that. Because we've heard it for so many years. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. It reminds me of the boy that, that hollered wolf. I don't know if you've been familiar with that old story. His job was to warn the people if the wolf would come. And the little boy just stood out there and he just felt like saying, wolf! And everybody was running. Where is the wolf? There's no wolf. And he, wolf! And everybody come running out. Where's the wolf? No wolf. And he kept saying it to finally folks quit listening to him. I hope that's not our case. Because we've been hearing Jesus is coming for a long time. The apostle Paul thought Jesus was coming back in his day. John thought he was going to see the day of the coming of the Lord. For centuries, preachers have been preaching, Jesus is coming. We've wrote songs about it. We've heard sermons about it. We've had seminars on it. They've made movies about it. And he still has not yet come. I hope to God we don't get so used to hearing it that it don't affect us anymore. I'm here to tell somebody today, he still coming and it's closer than it was yesterday the signs are all around us without a doubt this is the time this is our hour it's time to wake up out of our comfort wake up out of our sleep amen and look to the skies because Jesus is coming hallelujah and you know the amazing thing to me is it could happen today I mean, I'm not a prophecy specialist, but I believe that all the major prophecies leading up to the rapture has already happened. I'm looking at the fig tree ripening, Israel. I'm looking at all the things in the Middle East. The clock is ticking. God is trying to get our attention. It's closer than you think. And people have, oh, people have predicted the coming of the Lord. And some have even had the audacity to put dates on it. Can you imagine someone putting a date on the coming of the Lord? I don't fall for that kind of stuff. Uh, except maybe once. 
Now, I don't know. Some of you were around in 1988. Some of you weren't even thought of. But in 1988, a guy wrote a book called 88 Reasons While Jesus is Coming Back in 1988. I bought the book. I opened it up. And what impressed me was the author had gone back in the Old Testament types and shadows. He went back and looked at all the symbolism, the historic Hebrew festivals. He had done his homework. I'm reading, I'm like, oh man, he's got it lined up to the point he said the date. He said without a doubt, Jesus is coming back during the sounding of the seventh trumpet at the celebration of Rosh Hashanah. September 23rd, 1988. It was July then. I read that book. I said, oh my goodness, it's going to happen. It's going to happen September 23rd, 19. Oh, I got to be ready. I, got, I was telling all my friends, Jesus is coming September 23rd, 1988. I went to work telling all my friends, my supervisors, you need to get right with God. Jesus is coming September 23rd, 1988. And the date got closer. And the date got closer. It was September 22nd. And I was at work. And I told everybody, if y'all don't see me tomorrow, <laughs> don't say I didn't tell you. Midnight. September 23rd, I was up. I'm like, Lord, I don't want to miss this. I prayed. Oh, did I ever pray. I mean, I watched and I prayed. When I got up that morning to go to work, I mean, I, I thought of every sin I ever committed. I said, Lord, forgive me, Lord. I don't want nothing on my record. God, I want to live for you. I mean, I was walking on pins and needles. I don't even know how I got to work without crashing because I'm driving my car like this <laughs> I mean I just it just felt like any moment any moment it was going to happen I went to work I didn't care about the job I didn't care about reading the blueprint everybody was looking at me all funny I didn't care because I knew in a moment in the twinkling of an eye it was going to happen I left work I came home I'm looking out the window. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, it's going to happen today. It's going to happen today. 7 o'clock in the evening. 9 o'clock in the evening. Oh, it could be in the morning. It could be at night. But it's going to happen today. 11.30. I'm sweating. Okay, Lord Jesus. I'm on my knees beside my bed. Midnight. One minute after midnight. I'm thinking, well, it's not midnight everywhere. I'm still, I'm still waiting. I went to bed, woke up the next morning, nothing. Went to work, all my friends looking at me. Uh-huh. <laughs> you still here? I was so disappointed. I'm like, what happened? And people just gave me that funny look. Yeah, right. Then that guy that wrote the book, he wrote another one. I didn't buy that one. No, you got me once. You ain't going to get me again. But all of a sudden it dawned on me what the scripture says. Of that day knoweth no man. Not even the angels in heaven know the day or the hour. Can't nobody put a date on it? Nobody knows when Jesus is coming back. We never know the exact hour. We never know the exact day. So what am I talking about? How do I know? How can I be convinced? Well, I read that scripture in Matthew 24 where Jesus said, Of that day knoweth no man or the hour, but know this. In other words, there's some things you're not going to know, but there are some things you better know. He said, but know this. If the goodman of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, 
he would not go to sleep but he will stay alert that his house would not be broken into and I said wait a minute Lord no man knows the day no man knows the hour but you can't know the watch you can know the watch I said well Lord what are you talking about then I had to realize what is a watch a watch is not the instrument on your wrist that's not what Jesus is talking about a watch is a military term it comes from the military where a guard will stand for a particular watch a watch is a designated segment of time a designated segment of time when a soldier would stand watch he'd take the first watch or someone else would take the second watch but it's a designated segment of time Jesus said you won't know the day you won't know the hour but you can know that designated segment of time I said Lord how can we know that designated segment of time he says you're going to see all these things happening wars and pestilence and disease signs in the heavens and signs on the earth perilous times shall come in the latter days but the greatest of all signs that's being fulfilled in this watch and that's when God said in the last days I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh we've never seen a day where people are getting the Holy Ghost like we are seeing now every continent across the nominations I may not be able to explain it but you cannot deny it the power of the spirit is sweeping this world this is that watch this is that time. Jesus said it's like a woman about to have a baby. We had a young lady, amen, went to the doctor and the doctor let her know, you're going to be a mommy. She was so excited. Her husband and her, they were so excited. That Sunday she came to church. After seeing the doctor, she came to church wearing a maternity dress. She walked into church with a maternity dress flat as a pancake. <laughs> and some of the ladies were looking and said, Isn't she have a maternity dress? Oh. <laughs> they walked over to her and said, Girl, don't you know that's a maternity dress? She said, I know. <laughs> well, why are you wearing a maternity dress? She says, Because I'm expecting. She didn't look pregnant, but she was expecting. Amen. Friend, we don't have to wait till the rapture takes place. We are expecting. Hallelujah. Why you go to church? I'm expecting. Why are you living like you live? Because I'm expecting. Why are you praying to God? Because I'm expecting. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. I say it's going to happen. And Jesus said, just like a woman, when she finds out she's expecting a child, you don't see the evidence, but hang around. The signs will come. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Amen. And when she begins to show, now, I don't care how good that doctor is or how many degrees he's got, there is no doctor that can guarantee the day. Or the hour that child's going to be born. Can't do it. But he can give you that designated segment of time. Yeah. Hey Amen. Man, when my wife and I was expecting our first baby, whoo, man, I was so excited. I mean, I was on pins and needles. I had to learn all these big words. Learn how to breathe. When she started showing, I mean, she was just, I was so excited. She said, touch, touch, the touch. You can feel the baby. I said, ooh, I don't want to touch it. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> it was weird. And all the signs were there. All the signs were there. And as the closer it came, the more signs began to manifest. Until that night, she was laying there in the bed, and she started moaning and groaning. I'm like, is it time yet? And she would say, honey, it's not yet. The signs are here, but it's not yet. But it's getting closer. And I got to the point where I went to bed fully dressed. <laughs> I wanted to be ready. 
She said, well, you, got, you don't have to dress like that. I said, I want to be ready. Nobody knows what time is going to come. <laughs> Amen. And boy, them pains start to hit and boom. I, I jumped up. <laughs> is it time yet? No, no, it's passing. It's passing. Whew. Boy, that was close. That was close. All of a sudden, boom, it hit again. Is it time yet? It's getting there. Get the suitcase ready. Oh, Lord. Here we go. I'm watching. I'm watching. Then all of a sudden, it's weird because you can almost time them. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You could almost time the pain. And it was increasing. And it was getting more and more fervent. And all of a sudden, she said, okay. I think it's, we better get ready to get out of here. And you know what? I got a feeling that's how God wants us to be. He wants us to be on the alert. He wants us to be anticipating. Hallelujah. This world is not my home. Hallelujah. I'm ready to get up. I'm ready to go. I don't want nothing down here holding me down. Amen. And when the rapture comes, I can't let loose. I want Jesus. I want to be ready when that trumpet sounds. And brothers and sisters, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Oh, my Lord. Oh, I want to see him. Look upon his face. There to sing forever of his saving grace. On those streets of glory. Let me lift my voice. Cares all past. Home at last. Forever to rejoice. I'm going to take a trip. Anybody want to go? On that good old gospel ship. I'm going to be sailing far beyond the sky. Woo. And when I get there, I say, when I get there, I'm going to shout and I'm going to sing until the heavens ring. When I'm bidding this world goodbye. I'm ready to go. How about you? I'm ready to go. In that city where the Lamb is the light. In that city where there cometh no night. I've got a mansion over there. And it's free from toil and care in that city where the Lamb is the light. I'm getting ready to go. I'm getting ready to go. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Singing hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to see no more crying in there. No more crying there. No more crying there. No more crying there. No more crying there. We're, going. We're going. to see. Everybody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going. No more dying there. We're going. <laughs> There'll be no more dying. We're going. No more dying there. We're going. Everybody say, Hallelujah. We're going to see the King. 
no more holidays, no more hurt, no more pain, no more hospitals, no more prescription pills, no more ambulance, no more earthquakes, no more tornadoes, no more cancer, no more diabetes, no more glaucoma, no more arthritis, no more, oh God, we're going to go to see him. Anybody ready to go? Anybody ready to go? Is anybody ready to go? I've got to get ready. I've got to get my heart right. I've got to get my priorities in order. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Hallelujah. We've got to be rapture ready. Because the Bible says in a moment... In the twinkling of an eye. No forewarning. Jesus said be ready. He's coming back for those that have made themselves ready. The devil's intent is to get your attention. He wants to get you distracted. He wants, the Bible says in the end time, his desire is to wear out the saints. He wants to make you fatigued and tired. Hey Amen. He wants to fill your life with so many cares. Hallelujah. We need to walk in the spirit now more than ever. We need to read our Bibles more now than ever. We need to turn off the computer sometime and turn off the TV and turn off this and that and start getting in the word and getting zoned in and talk to him and let him talk back to you. Jesus is coming. Be seated for a minute. Let me turn on my imagination. Because it could happen today. I don't believe there's anything hindering the rapture of the church. I don't think there's no other prophecy need to be fulfilled before the rapture of the church. I believe the rapture of the church is the next thing on God's great agenda. And it could happen today. What if? Would you be ready? Would you be ready? There's nothing more important than to make yourselves ready for the coming of the Lord. Anything that's holding you back, get rid of it. Let me tell you something. There is nothing worth missing the rapture over. There's not enough money worth missing the rapture over. There's no man, there's no woman worth missing the rapture over. Hallelujah. We need to put him first. What if it happened today? What would that be? Be like. That's my trumpet, y'all. All of a sudden, I'm floating in space. Whoa, what is this? I'm dressed in all white. Oh, and then as far as you can see, Saints of all the ages, dressed in shining, glimmering clothes. Oh. You look down and there's the earth. Oh, oh my, I'm, I'm in space. I hope I'm not dreaming. I hope it's not a flashback of those drugs I took years ago. Oh my, is this real? Is this real? And everybody's looking around and look, there's a, look at that star. And up above, there's a beautiful, brilliant, golden star. That's amazing. Then suddenly the whole crowd begins to move toward that star faster, faster. So planets are going by. Shoo. Stars are going by. Shoo. Galaxies are going by. And we're getting closer to that star. My heart is racing. Oh my goodness, is this really happening? Oh my goodness, this is awesome. And all of a sudden we get closer and wait, look, look. That's not a star. It's a city. I can see buildings. It's a golden city. And all of a sudden, we, we land on those celestial shores. Oh, oh, look at this. Streets of gold. This is, this, this is the streets of gold. But it's not like I thought it was going to be. It's nowhere near where I thought. 
See, eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. You haven't even imagined what God has prepared for us. Oh, my. This is wonderful. Look at this. And as we stand on the streets of gold, we look in front of us at this huge, beautiful building. And there's angels hovering over us. And all of a sudden, this angel stands out among the crowd and says, You, the redeemed of the Lord, enter in. And these doors open up. And we walk into that building. And there are tables set all over that building. And I'm thinking, this must be the banquet hall. This is, this is absolutely incredible. I hope I'm not dreaming. If I'm dreaming, don't wake me up. This is amazing. And you know what's so really cool about it? Somehow, some way, we all know everybody. We know everyone's names. Isn't that amazing? We're looking around and, look, there's Peter. <laughs> there's Peter. And there's James. Oh, my God. Mary, the mother of Jesus. <laughs> this is so awesome. And all of a sudden, somebody's waving at us. We're, like, we're looking, we go, oh my goodness, there's my grandma. Grandma, oh my goodness. And there's my sister. Oh my goodness, that's my sister. And there's Dave, Uncle Dave. How did he get here? <laughs> <laughs> But it's going to be a reunion. It's going to be a reunion like we've never imagined. Loved ones getting back together. The lost ones have come back. Hallelujah. Oh, it's going to be so joyous. It's going to be amazing. And as we are gathering and fellowshipping and hugging and crying over each other, hallelujah, we look around and, and there's, there's, there's pastor and there's pastor's wife. Hey, pastor, I made it. Oh, what joy, what joy that's going to be. And while we are all gathered there, all the angels are watching us and envious of us in a way that they could be partakers of this. But God gave it to us. And then we are all gathered around in that beautiful room, and the table's got name plates on it. And I'm like... Man, I've got to find my name play in, in alphabetical order. So I run over to the East section. And I find my name play. Easter, Michael L. Easter. Oh, this is my spot. <laughs> this is my spot. And as we all get our places, and we're standing there getting ready to be seated, this huge angel appears on the platform. And he says, Thou favorite of the Lord, now it's time to receive your crowns. And then angels started walking through the crowd with these beautiful crowns in their hands. And they're passing them out. They're passing them out. Those crowns are being passed out. Here's your crown. Here's your crown. Here's your crown. Are you excited? Yeah. <laughs> I gave him his crown. He was like, thank you very much. And he's passing out these crowns. And, and, and you, get, you get your crown. And you look at it and it is bedecked with precious stones and jewels. And it's glittering in the light. And you're like, wow, look at this. And the angel walks by and says, every precious stone represents a soul you helped save for the kingdom. And then you look at your crown and you go, they gave me the wrong crown. I didn't, I'm not responsible for these many souls. Then the angel comes back smiling and says, you remember that time you spoke in tongues? The spirit was helping you to pray for things you didn't know nothing about. 
while you were praying in tongues, God was directing that prayer to somebody over here that needed deliverance. When you prayed in tongues, God was bringing down strongholds. When you prayed in tongues, somebody got the Holy Ghost. When you pray in tongues, you don't know what you're praying, but God knows exactly what you're praying and he's using you in spiritual warfare. That's why we ought to talk in tongues every day. That's why we ought to talk in tongues in prayer, in worship, in church. Hallelujah. It's our spiritual weapon. You are a soul winner and you don't even know it. And you got all of these jewels in your crown and you're sitting there going, oh my, this is so exciting. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. As you're holding that crown. And then this angel on the platform says, and now, who among you is worthy to wear that crown? And we look at ourselves and we look at each other and with tears streaming down our cheeks, we say, I'm not worthy. I'm not even worthy to be here. I, I, I can't put it on. I'm not worthy. Then the angel says, truly, there is one that's worthy. And right behind the angel, there's an elevated platform with a huge door, double doors with golden handles. And there's a scene in the center of the door. And beyond the door, there's no light. Then suddenly, the angel says, there's only one that is worthy to wear the crown. Then a shaft of bright light shines through the creases of the door. And all of a sudden, slowly, the door begins to open. And the angel says, and now, introducing <laughs> he who is, he who was, he is to come, the almighty, the bishop of our souls, the chief cornerstone, the day spring, the father of lights in whom there's no variable of shadow of turning, the great and holy one, the immutable, the indivisible, the impossible, the incredible, the almighty, judge of the universe, the king of kings, and the lord of lords, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the bright and morning star, the rose of Sharon, the lily of the the one true God Jesus 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 walks out. When Jesus walks out, every eye will behold him. When Jesus walks out, for the first time, you look at him. For the first time, you can see him. I wonder how you're going to act. 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 When you see Jesus, when you look into his eyes, when you see the nail prints in his hands, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? My Lord and my God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I found a level of Hallelujah. 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 You are first and you are the last. You're the alpha and you're the mega. You're the reason we live and move and breathe. Everything was because of you. All things created by you and for you. I praise you. I worship you. I adore you. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't let nothing distract you. Don't let nothing hinder you. Don't let nothing get in the way. Set your heart on heaven. Set your eyes on the eastern sky. Get ready. Be watchful. Be looking. The hour is upon us. It is high time. It's not just time. It is high time. This is being preached on the pulpit. It's being preached in the media. It's being preached from the heavens. Jesus is coming! 
It's time to wake up, church. It's time to shake ourselves. It's time to examine ourselves. He could come today, today. And if he did, would you be ready? I want to be ready. Musicians, would you come? Jesus, we've come through too much. We've been through too many battles to turn around now. You've brought us through too much, Lord God, to bring us this far and drop us. Oh God, hold us in your righteous right hand. God, undergird us with strength and power and anointing. Lord, set us free from every hindrance and every trick of the enemy. God, let the mind of Christ be in us. Hallelujah. Give us a hunger like we've never had. Give us a thirst for you like we've never had. Give us a yearning for heaven like we've never had. Oh God, I want to go be with you. I want to be with you for eternity. I want to be with you forever. I want to I wanna hold your hand. I want to walk the streets of gold. I want to see the crystal river. I, I want to see my uncle and my auntie again. And I, I want to see my baby sister. I, I want to see your face. Help me to be what you want me to be. Help me to live these last hours for you. What do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? How do you want me to live? I cast off the works of darkness and I put on the armor of light. I'm your child. You're my daddy. You're my daddy. You're my father. Our father, which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in me in earth in me as it is in heaven father give us this day our daily bread lead us not into temptation lord deliver us from evil thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever and ever throughout all eternity 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 life with no ending pleasures forevermore the cares of this life grow dim as I draw closer to you I'm waiting for you master I'm looking for you my lord keep my eyes on you I want to be rapture ready I don't want to miss the sounding of the trumpet I don't want to be weighted down with the cares of life oh God Set me free. Set me free. He got the cares and the worries and concerns are not worthy to be even compared to what you've got for us. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. Come quickly. I want you to come back in the next 20 minutes. I want to be with you. For you've come that we might have life, abundant, eternal, joy and peace. Oh God, forevermore. I love you. I love you. I love you. Cover me with your blood. I plead the blood of Jesus on my mind, my conscience. Wash away condemnation and wash away guilt. I confess I'm weak, but you are strong. Cleanse me now. Wash me. Lord God, forgive me of being slothful and forgive me, Lord, of, of not trusting you completely. I receive your forgiveness. I receive the blood on my eyes. Cleanse my eyes. Let me look at things that are pure and good and holy. Cleanse my lips. Only let me speak that which is edifying in love. Change me. Help me. Shake me. Mold me. After your will. <laughs> yes, yes, the Lord is touching you. The Lord is touching you. 
he sees you and he's blessing you right now hallelujah forget those things that are behind now forget those things but press on to the high calling press on forget those things that are behind you but I want you to be able to see what God has for you he didn't shed his blood in vain <laughs> glory to God wrap your arms around him what are we doing we're just practicing we're just rehearsing we're just getting ready we're just getting ready oh Lord come quickly father come quickly let your Holy Spirit reign upon us right now fill us up again come on some of you need to be filled again get it again come on let it overflow touch him touch him reach out to him come on press in press in father I love you fill me up again fill me up again hallelujah I don't care about what time it is the trumpet is gonna sound hallelujah fill me up fill me up fill me up fill me up hallelujah I'm not worried about the trials and tribulations of life anymore I want to see you I want to be with you hallelujah hallelujah oh together together he's gonna raise us up if he was coming back today would you be ready to go or do you want to go repent of your sins repent and be refreshed be renewed be refilled let his love wash over you let his love wash over you hallelujah I'm getting ready oh glory to God